This is a new patient that presents with pain. Uh, it occurs throughout the day. Upon the palpation of the muscles, the lower left masseter muscle was very tender. Also, the left sternocleidoid mastoid muscle at the insertion of the lower mandible. She doesn't appear to have any pain when she wakes up in the morning, but throughout the day, pain occurs and it's truly bothering her. You can see how her tongue is scalloped, and that's from the grinding that she is doing at night. Um, she's also showing her cheek, the linea alba there. And so she's definitely doing activity during the day as well as at night. So if it's during the day, the question will be uh, if it's pathway wear or not. We're checking the gum tissue right now. And as we do that, you can see how easily it bleeds. And the patient uh, is fairly good with removing plaque. Uh, there's not a lot of plaque in her mouth, but she doesn't floss ever, is her description. And so the gum tissue really is irritated. It needs to be um, stimulated and uh, we'll be doing some oral hygiene instruction, bringing her along soft, slowly and softly so that she doesn't cut that gum tissue. You can see the edges of her upper, uh, lower front teeth there uh, where she was chipping them. Here's the lower molar, a possible a little bit of recession. Uh, we'll know better once we get that stain cleaned up. Uh, she's had almost no decay in her mouth. This is tooth number 18 and uh, there is a cavity there. Uh, tooth number 19 doesn't appear to be having such a problem. She has two deciduous or primary teeth, children's teeth, and she uh, that oftentimes causes a little bit of a problem with a person's bite. And so the lower uh, second molars are there. Tooth number 31 has a cavity. Uh, 30 probably uh, does not. Uh, tooth number two looks like there's a cavity uh, going on. We're going to confirm those uh, using uh, a laser. And then possibly there might be something on tooth number three. There's a little filling that she had sometime when she was much smaller. She doesn't even remember it. In her mind, she's never had a cavity done. Tooth number four, the distal, looked like it, it might have some sort of a weak spot on, so we spent a little bit more time looking at that. And there really isn't anything that shows that visually. And so we're going to uh, just uh, treat uh, the area with fluoride and reevaluate it. Here are her upper front teeth. You can see the edges of the teeth where she's chipped and worn them away. But also on the inside, you can see where she's developing some pathway wear. And uh, she's wearing away the inside uh, concavity there. And that is uh, probably what's contributing to her pain during the day. That uh, at night she's grinding her teeth and wearing them down. Uh, probably not all night long, uh, but during the day she's contributing to, uh, to that by uh, having her lower front teeth hitting the edges of her teeth when she functions. Maybe in speech, she had mentioned that she's noticing that uh, a little bit, uh, but it's certainly that she is touching her teeth significantly more than 4 to 18 minutes a day. She wasn't truly aware uh, of how she was grinding it down her lower, uh, her upper front uh, tooth there, tooth number nine. Uh, the little chip there, she doesn't really remember how that happened in the straightening uh, or the, of the edge of tooth number eight as well. Uh, this little uh, brown spot is in conjunction to having a little composite placed after her orthodontia. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to just polish that away, but we may have to replace the filling. If she was going to whiten her teeth, then she would definitely have to replace the filling because the filling won't change color with that. The edge of the tooth there, if we just added to it, you could see how she would end up knocking that filling off because it's just so 
lined up with her lower teeth. And so in order to take care of that, she's going to need to have her lower teeth either adjusted, smoothed down uh, to create that room. Another possibility would be to orthodontically move that or uh, move the other teeth so that there is some pathway wear, which would probably uh, not be a bad decision, but her teeth are straight and she's not too excited about having orthodontia done. First thing we're going to do is uh, uh, use a night guard to relax her jaw and then find out where her true bite is. Go ahead and take a look at where centric relation is, where her jaw closes very easily in the back area. It's a reproducible spot. You'll see in a minute that when she does, there's just a small amount of space uh, between her teeth on the upper left side, which is where she's having pain. And then uh, when she bites down, when she'll look at the video, you'll actually see that little space close. And so here we are, we can go ahead, go ahead and moving the jaw in a nice relaxed way and bring it over so we can see. And with that in mind, uh, we're going to have her open. You can see the space there, now bite down hard and then the space closes. So uh, we're going to see if that actually is the case when we uh, use the night guard to relax her jaw and her muscles will be a little easier to use. Uh, the rest of these are photos that we took to uh, just document uh, uh, what's uh, going on as she continues to work on her hygiene and getting the, the work done. Uh, we'll be able to look at that. You can also see in that last photo how the tongue uh, fit really well against the back of the teeth there, causing that scalloped border. And we also have some photos of her grinding her teeth. And there, her tongue is uh, doing the same thing. And so that's the first evaluation. She's coming back to get her teeth cleaned a night guard, do the fillings, and we'll see how things work.